Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome to our worship service on this exciting and full Sunday morning as we kick off our fall program year. We are grateful that each one of you has chosen to be with us today. Um, Those that are tuning in online, we are having some video difficulties, so you may just hear the service today and see some of the slides. We're working on some of those issues, um, but you should be able to hear us all right this week. Um, The church halls, if you were here a little bit before worship today, you will have heard ringing throughout the halls um, as our adult bell choir and chime choir began again this morning. And our classrooms were filled as Sunday school classes for children and adults did resume this morning. With today being our kickoff Sunday, the Fellowship and Outreach Committee is hosting an ice cream social in the Fellowship Hall following worship today. We hope that you can join us and stay for some ice cream even on this little bit of chilly Sunday morning. Um, Just look ahead to where it's going to be 90 again on Thursday and think about that when you're um, having your ice cream this morning. And of course, that fun and excitement continues every Sunday morning. The usual schedule for those activities can be found in your bulletins and online when the bells meet, when the choir rehearses Sunday morning and Wednesday nights, um, when our Sunday school classes meet as well. Now, we can't have ice cream every week, but we do have lots of fun things planned uh, following worship uh, for the next several weeks. Uh, Next week, we'll be having another one of our game gatherings in the fellowship hall. Uh, Last time, we had um, played apples to apples for about two hours, some of those folks. So you don't have to stay the whole time, but lots of fun. Um, So bring a game, bring a snack to share, uh, bring a friend uh, for that fun time next Sunday. Then looking ahead on to Sunday, September 22nd. There's a meeting for the women of the church uh, to discuss the future work of the Presbyterian Women's Association. All women are a part of this group, whether or not you're actively involved in a circle. Um, So you're invited to join in this meeting to talk about um, some of your hopes and and what you might see for the future of uh, Presbyterian women. And they'll be meeting again on Sunday the 22nd after worship. Uh, Also on that Sunday, there'll be an informational meeting for parents of some of our youth who are in grades 7th and up who have not yet gone through confirmation. Um, We're going to talk about some of the specifics um, and go over what a schedule might look like um, that tries to include all of our busy um, families. Uh, As we're starting back to many of our programs, we also have a new book study that will be beginning on Tuesday the 17th. Uh, at 1.30, the book is available through the office, um, and it is Savannah Guthrie's book, Mostly What God Does, Reflections on Seeking and Finding His Love Everywhere. Um, again, that starts on September the 17th at 1.30. Um, and finally, we are grateful, which way should I turn, to welcome back Reverend Linda to worship with us today. We have certainly missed your presence in our midst um, and your voice uh, in our services. We are glad you're back with us, and um, yeah, she says she's glad to be back too, so great. Well, let us uh, pause for a moment of prayer as we continue in worship today. Extravagant God, you offer riches that no earthly pleasures can match. You pour out mercy and cover us with love. You show us true justice and offer to us peace. You provide us with every need and promise us with eternal life spent with you. In the midst of the glitz and glamour of this world, nothing and no one shines with your brilliance. Bathe us in the light of Christ. Illumine us with your Holy Spirit and enable us to live only for you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Those who feel comfortable standing may do so as we join together in to call to worship. What seems like an ending, secure in our ending, knowing that we come from dust and we will return to dust and we are forever in the care of Jesus. 
with hearts that are frickle, with eyes that are woozy. Be Lord Jesus Christ, you bless us with your word, even when we mock and curse you. Lord Jesus Christ, you pour out your grace for us, even when we give you sour wine. one who offers us salvation. 
God knows us and loves us, rejoicing when we do good and forgiving us when we fall short. For in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. of Christ is knowing how to store treasures in heaven. So let us share that peace with one another that we may be rich in God's love each and every day of our lives. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another in peace. So I'd like to invite the children and youth to come up. And youth. And youth. You staying with Harper? Yeah. Here you go. Okay. I'm going to ask all of you to help me with something very important this morning. We are going to pray for our teachers and youth leaders. These are the people who have agreed to help you all learn more about God's love this year. So I'm going to invite Allison Rogers, Pam Johnston, Priscilla Kramer, Darlene Custer, Sabine Sivy, Pat Dugan, and Reverend Linda. Come on down. You're the next contestant. Um. In Paul's letter to the Ephesians, he writes, I encourage you to live as people worthy of the call you have received from God. God has given grace to each one of you, measured out by the gift that is given by Christ. God gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. The purpose was to equip God's people for the work of serving and building up the body of Christ. 
In the sacred story of our faith, people have always been called by the one who is the source of truth and wisdom to guide and to teach God's people. In the First Testament, the Old Testament, we are called to pass down God's commandments to our children and to speak about God's law constantly. At the end of his earthly ministry, Jesus commissioned the disciples to go out into the world to teach and to preach the good news. Today, we celebrate people who have responded to God's call, and we joyfully commission them as the educators of our congregation as they use their gifts that they have been given to lead and to guide our Sunday school, our Bible studies, and our classes. Through Christ and by the Spirit, God has given each of us gifts with which to serve the church and the world. We are blessed by teachers and leaders who use those gifts in creative and faithful ways who, and stand before us now as they are ready to begin a new year of service. With deep gratitude for the blessings we receive through the service of these people, we commission them for the service as Christ has called them. First, I'm going to ask a few questions of the teachers then of our young disciples, and finally, Pastor Jamie will ask some questions of the whole church. To the teachers, do you promise to prepare your programs with hearts and minds open to the leading and inspiration of the Holy Spirit? Do you promise to carry out this work with enthusiasm and joy, patience and courage, trust and love? Do you promise to trust in God's guidance, ever seeking to learn as you lead, to listen as much as you speak, and to walk with people with faith and authenticity? To the children. You are a very, in, you're a very important part of our congregation, and thanks for being here. So we have two questions for you. Will you participate with enthusiasm and joy and will you bring your questions with you as you explore with your teachers God's incredible love for you? Please say, we will. Do you promise to show Jesus' love to your teachers? Please say, we do. Now, Nevada and Riley and Isaiah are here representing our normal, what, eight or nine in our Sunday school classes. And Harper and Dylan are representing our, what, about 10 youth? Sabine. Sabine's here in two accounts. She's here as a leader for um, our Sunday school class and as one of our youth. I'm going to ask the congregation now to respond. If you are able to stand and would like to, you may. These teachers and leaders have a vital role in the nurturing of our faith. Will you support them with prayer, encouragement, interest, and compassion? We will. Friends, let us acknowledge the gifts and calling of our siblings in Christ. We receive you as servants of Christ. We pledge to support you in your service. We will encourage you with works and prayers. We will consider ourselves co-workers with you in the service of Christ. Now we're going to ask the teachers to come right here in the middle, and we're going to hold hands and make a circle around them. So y'all might have to get in real close. <laughs> real. And we're going to spread our hands out, and Miss Leah and I are going to lead a prayer. All right, we ready? Yep. Let us pray. Guiding God, you have made us all with our own special gifts. Like a body that has many parts, we are a community with many parts. We thank you for all the ways in which you interact with our lives. Today, we ask for your presence with our teachers, those who serve by helping us to go deeper with you. We thank you for each one of, our, of them, for the ways in which they illumine your word, expand our horizons, and endure our curiosities. May each of them be granted wisdom, patience, and confidence. May their reliance be placed on you, but also that they may feel encouraged by us. Inspire us to make the time to participate in Christian education so that we too can live out our baptismal vows, to mature as Christians in the church, and to engage in God's mission in the world. 
As your spirit works among us, remind us of our need to learn more. Help each of us to recognize our gifts so that the world may know your love and compassion. Guide us as we represent you to all who we meet. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Congratulations. We look forward to all the things you're going to teach us this year. You may be seated. Open the scriptures to us today, that in the word read and proclaimed, we might know your truth. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. The epistle lesson is from Colossians 3, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. Therefore, if you were raised with Christ, Look for the things that are above where Christ is sitting at God's right side. Think about the things above and not the things on and not things on earth. You died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed and with him in glory. But now set aside these things, such as anger, rage, malice, slander, and obscene language. Don't lie to each other. Take off the old human nature with its practices and put on the new nature, which is reviewed, renewed in knowledge by conforming in the image of the one who created it. In this image, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free, but Christ is all things and in all people. Our gospel lesson comes from the 12th chapter of Luke verses 16 to 21. Then Jesus told them a parable. A certain rich man's land produced a bountiful crop. He said to himself, what will I do? I have no place to store my harvest. Then he thought, here's what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. That's where I'll store all my grain and goods. I'll say to myself, you have stored up plenty of goods, enough for several years. Take it easy, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. But God said to him, fool, tonight you will die. Now who will get the things you have prepared for yourself? This is the way it will be for those who hoard things for themselves and aren't rich toward God. And from Genesis 2 and 3, the Lord God formed the human, Adam, from the topsoil of the fertile land, Adama, and blew life's breath into his nostrils. The human came to life. You are soil. To the soil you will return. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of beginnings and endings, open us to your word today, that we might hear your promises and be reminded of your presence in every moment of our lives. Amen. Remember you are dust, and to dust you will return. These words commonly associated with Ash Wednesday introducing us to the season of Lent may seem a bit out of season as we hear them today kicking off our fall program year. And while we won't be receiving the sign of ashes on our foreheads in a cross, we will explore some other reminders of our humanity 
and our createdness in God's image. This reminder comes from the biblical story of creation. As we dive back into our whole church um, follow me curriculum this fall, Professor Amy Powell writes, we like to think of ourselves as the crowning glory of God's creation, exalted above everything else God has made, created on the final day. Surely God made us out of something really special, right? But as we hear in Genesis 2-7, when it comes time for God to create humanity, God fashions us out of the dust of the ground. In Hebrew, we heard there is a play on words that drives this point home. The human, Adam, is created out of the ground, Adama. We are earth creatures through and through. Our theme for the next few weeks, Walk Humbly, comes from our own play on words in English. The root of the word humble is humus, soil, dirt. To walk humbly is to stay grounded, to live like the earthlings we are. We are made of the same stuff as all of God's creatures, and like the rest of creation, we will one day die and return to the dust from which we came. I'd like you all to take out the little heart that you received when you came in this morning. If you didn't receive one, raise your hand and one of our ushers will bring one to you. This is seed paper. It's recycled paper that has been embedded with the seeds of wildflowers. Once we're done with them today, find a nice sunny spot where you'd like to see a couple of wild, wildflowers bloom. You can plant this paper just under the soil, keep it well watered, and your wildflowers will start to sprout. Just in time for winter, I know. <laughs> Part of what it means to walk humbly is to acknowledge the beautiful, fragile gift of earthly life. As we reflect on these passages and throughout the rest of the service, I'd like you to think about some of the gifts that God has given you that you are thankful for and write them on this cutout. Gifts that you are thankful for that God has given you. We need this Ash Wednesday reminder that we are dust more often than we may wish to think about it. Reverend Powell writes, We spend too much of our time pretending that we are our own makers and keepers. We live as though watching our diet, ensuring our valuables, and building a name for ourselves will make us invulnerable to death and to loss. Wouldn't you know it, Jesus has a parable for that. Jesus' teaching moment in this Luke text comes as a response to a question from someone in the crowd. A young man is having a dispute with his brother over their inheritance. This question, if you're reading through Luke, seems to come out of left field. Jesus, up to this point, has been talking about the Holy Spirit and God's provision and here comes this kid asking Jesus to decide a dispute about his inheritance. It seems like he hasn't even been paying attention to what Jesus is preaching on, but just waiting for Jesus to pause for a moment so he could ask this question and have this wise teacher settle his dispute. Jesus understands this motivation, and he doesn't even humor this man with an answer, but tells him I am not here to serve as judge over you. Then Jesus says, watch out. Guard yourselves against all kinds of greed. After all, one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. The literal translation from the Greek for this word greed is something like more having. More having. It is a reference to those who have, but want to have it all, 
or want to continue to gain more even when they have enough to live comfortably. Instead of helping the man to get his inheritance, one commentator writes, Jesus points this man to a different understanding of what life is altogether. Life is not to be valued or measured in terms of wealth and possessions. And here Jesus says it, a response that causes some trouble. A phrase that hits right at home with me and so many others today. He says one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Doesn't that go against almost everything that we have been taught in society? Isn't this the opposite of what we see in so many movie and TV shows on a daily basis? Doesn't this stand in the face of what many consider to be the American dream of prosperity and success? But Jesus tells us God's realm is different. In God's kingdom, an abundance of possessions doesn't mean everything. Reading this parable at a surface level, we find a rich man who has so much to do with, so much that he doesn't know what to do with it. His crop this year is so big that he's making plans to build bigger storehouses so that he can store it all and be prepared for many years to come, not having to work. But God has other plans. God calls him a fool and tells him that his life will end and everything that he has will be left behind him. You can't take it with you when you go. But let's pause for a moment and think about what is it that this man has done that is so bad. There is no sign of him acquiring this wealth illegally or at the expense of others. There is no mention of his, him mistreating his workers or not giving them a fair wage. Verse 16 tells us very plainly, the land produced abundantly. He is wealthy because the land that he owns has produced this overflowing crop. It was a good year. The soil was fertile. There was plenty of rain, lots of sunshine. The elements have all worked together in his favor. People in Jesus' time and many today would say that God has blessed this man with an abundant harvest. So where is his folly? What has this man done that causes God to call him a fool. You may have seen it already. It's staring right at us. As we read on, it becomes clear as to what makes God call him a fool. It is what he does with this abundance of harvest that gets him into trouble. This man does not have the kingdom of God in his heart or on his mind. He not once thinks of anyone besides himself. In the parable, we see him even have a conversation with himself, talking to his own soul. Let's see how many times he says, I will, in these verses. Then he said, I will do this. I will put, pull down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have an ample amount of goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. He wants to build bigger barns to store all my grain and my goods. Never once does he think about anyone other than himself, not his neighbor, not even God, who has blessed him with this abundance. Surely at the beginning of the growing season, he had already calculated what the harvest should have been. He knew what he needed to plant to survive the winter and to sell off, and he had planted and planned accordingly for that. But as the harvest approaches, he sees that it is much too large for the storehouses that he has. And here his greed, his more having, shows through again. What he had initially planned for was plenty for him to live on. He already had enough space to store what he needed, but when he sees this overflowing crop, he must have it all. 
He does not think of sharing this harvest with anyone, but continues to want to gather it all for himself. How can we avoid this pitfall? How can we keep from falling into the same trap that this farmer fell into? We all want to be able to retire one day. We want to be able to provide for our family and not have to work until the day that we die. We all want a sense of security that we will be taken care of if we lose our jobs or if tragedy strikes. Is this telling us that we should not plan for or save for the future? I don't think that's what this is saying. There are at least three places that I see this man falling short of living into God's kingdom as Jesus has been presenting it throughout Luke. First, he shows no gratitude to God for God's clear hand in his abundance, i.e., it was the land that produced abundantly. He had nothing to do with it, and he shows no thanks to God. Two, it is not that the man was storing up things for the future, that he was saving for a rainy day or even for his retirement, but that he was storing it all up, even with this overflowing abundance. He was only concerned with himself. He was not being a good steward of the things with which God had given him. And three, he forgets his humanity. He forgets. He is dust. These are the traps we must try to avoid. In the final verse, Jesus adds a bit of commentary on the parable for us. He says, So it is for those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. Okay, good. Here it is, what we, here is what we have to do to not end up like this man. We have to not store up treasures for ourselves, but be rich to God. Okay, so what does that mean? Throughout the Gospel of Luke, Jesus talks about the dangers of wealth and God's reckoning with the rich, the overabundance. In each case, the wealthy are only concerned with the more having, with having more in this life. They're not worried about what is to come or what will happen with these riches once they are gone. They do not walk humbly. They certainly don't seem to have any reminders that they came from dust and that that is where they are headed. Their riches blind them to the needs of others. Their need to have more keeps them from sharing what they have been given with those who do not have as much. Being rich toward God has nothing to do with monetary wealth, but everything to do with spiritual wealth. Being rich toward God is being in a right relationship with God. It is spending time alone with God in prayer, praying for God's kingdom to come, and praying for the well-being of one another. But Jesus also reminds us that it is not enough to pray for one another. Unlike the rich man in today's story, we must be willing to share our abundance with our neighbors. We must be willing to bless others with the things that we ourselves have been blessed with. We must continue to support the ministries of our church and other charities that help out our neighbors. We must continue to give of our time and our talents to the things that make a difference in people's lives. Unlike this rich fool, when we look at our own lives, I hope that we can see the many blessings that God has bestowed upon us. We must be grateful for this abundance and following God's lead, using what we have been given to be a blessing to others. We must remember that we are created from dust and that we all return to the dust. We must not forget that our time is in God's hands, that our earthly treasures and accomplishments are all temporary, and that death is the end of this earthly road for us all. But we also must remember that being dust does not make us any less precious to God. 
There is no contradiction between goodness and finitude. Our earthly finitude is part of being God's good, beloved creatures. To walk humbly is to acknowledge the beautiful, fragile gift of earthly life. Again, as the service continues, if you have not written a gift that you are thankful for on your cutout, continue to reflect on the many gifts that you have received from God. Remember you are dust, and to dust you will return. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus using these words from Scripture. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved, if we hold with the past that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day, and that he was true. You may be seated. We're going to trust that the mic can pick me up from over here since my mic is not working. Um, It is such a joy to be back here in church, and it is a joy um, to um, lead in this time of prayer, knowing that we are all praying. Um, Each and every Sunday when we um, do this and there are all of these wonderful um, papers that come up 
that remind us, remind me, that we are a praying congregation um, and um, caring for the needs of others and lifting up those concerns. I was also um, reminded of that um, during my time of being off and um, in recovery that um, I received a stack of cards that reminded me that people were praying for me, and so I thank you for your prayers. But let us now quiet our hearts and enter into this time of prayer. Lord God, we continue to praise you that you have gathered us together this morning. We are grateful that you call us to be your people and call us to follow your paths of peace and righteousness. You have set before us the way that leads to life. May we in all aspects of our daily lives walk humbly with you in trust. Grant us tenderness of heart needed to consider the needs of others, especially those who are lost or hurting, lonely or in need. Grant us the grace to embrace those outside of our own circles and to see Christ in the lives of others. With grateful hearts, then, we place our prayers before you. We pray for the church, for Westminster and the church throughout the world. Help us to be a true and living sign of the faith, hope, and love we have in you. We pray for the world, uproot systems of oppression, weed out violence and corruption. And we pray, O oh Lord, this morning for um, the leaders of these many places in which we have entered into, it seems, an endless cycle, cycle of war with so much senseless violence and death. Give leaders wisdom and the will to do it differently. We pray for this community, rescue those who are in trouble in our streets and in our homes, protect the vulnerable, and this Weekend, once again, we remember the vulnerable of those that have been touched by gun violence. We pray comfort for all. And again, we pray for leaders, um, those that, um, and all of us that can make a change, um, that this violence might come to its um, senseless violence come to an end. We pray especially this day then for those who are working and living at the rescue mission Gracious God, we also pray that you would look in compassion upon us and hear our prayers and the sighs of our hearts now. O oh Lord, as this day we lift up to you, Katie and Jean, Bill B and Kathy E. We remember especially all those who are um, struggling with cancer. May there be comfort and peace and healing. We pray this day for Shirley and Riley and Matt. We bring before you our prayers for Lori C. and for Kelly, for Jane and Leroy. We remember this day Kevin and Ron and Bill and Kelly, Zach, and Zeke. We lift up to you this day our prayers for Marilyn and Maureen and Chet, for Ken and John and Tom and Jim and Karen. Here too are continuing prayers for those we bring to you weekly God and community holy in one hear us as we pray together using the words that we have been taught by Jesus our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power.
Jesus Christ, God cautions us to be storing up riches for ourselves. Let us consider these things as we give our conscience directs as our conscience directs us.
Will you join me in the prayer of dedication? O oh God, your creative presence makes us abundant. You provide us with what is needed in your love. Through this offering, we participate in your work, so all your people might be dressed in pure joy for the sake of Christ. What a blessing it is to have our choir back with us after their summer off as well. And David on the trumpet today. I think I saw you singing along too, <laughs> trumpet and. Um, and a thank you to all those who um, provided special music throughout the summer um, as the choir was on their break. Now let us hear our benediction and blessing as we go out into our ice cream social and on into the world from there. Go and join the song of creation, singing out in praise to God. Go and join the cries of creation, yearning for healing. Go and work for the healing and the wholeness of the earth. Amen. <laughs>